Good morning, I'm Jeannie Poole, the Editor-in-Chief of the Heart Rhythm O2 Journal, and welcome to HRS TV. I'm here with Uma Srivatsa from UC Davis, who is our Section Editor of our Global Voices Initiative within the Journal. And we are honored to have with us today, Dr. Kunlawi Nadanami. Dr. Nadanami, it is such an honor to have you here. You are just a one of those uh, people whose name has been throughout EP my entire career. You have really led the way in so many areas. You are the director of the Pacific Rim Electrophysiology Research in Bangkok, Thailand, but you're also a professor of medicine at the University of Southern California, and you were chief of cardiology at the University of Colorado. You've been a leader over the broad aspects of electrophysiology, but in particular, you've led the way with so much work in Brigada syndrome, which of course is highly prevalent in Thailand. So we're thrilled to have you with us here today. And I'm going to turn over our conversation now to Uma Srivatsa to lead our discussion. Good morning, Dr. Nadamani. Welcome to the HRS TV. Um, so, you, you know, you and I have known each other for so many years, you know, from the days of Dr. Brahma Singh. And I know that you've been traveling to Thailand for a long time, and you have done a lot of initial studies there with respect to the sudden cardiac death syndrome and Brugada syndrome. Please tell us about your journey. Thank you so much. Uh, first, I'd like to thank Jenny for just a kind word, and uh, thank you Uma, for inviting me here. Um, well, I have been working on this sudden unexplained death syndrome, and now we know that it's a Bukhara syndrome and J-Web syndrome uh, for 30 years. And how it started, when actually when I was just about uh, to take my job in Colorado, at the time, there's a lot of uh, problem in Thailand uh, and also in the US from the refugees from Lao Chin refugees, uh, uh, Cambodian refugee, Vietnamese refugee that came to the US. And the CDC as the one who coined the term um, uh, sudden unexplained death syndrome. In fact, uh, the first documentation of ventricular fibrillation associated with the, um, this refugee sudden unexplained death syndrome was from University of Washington, you know, yes. Kathleen Otto was the first author. In fact, she could have been the one who first described the JWEB syndrome because there was one of EKG that just showed V2 to V6 uh, had SC elevation, just a tidbit for everybody know. You know. The paper published in 1984 and now of internal medicine. Now, anyway, so, and also at the time they, there was fellows from Thailand came to Colorado to, to do the study. And then at the time, as you will uh, probably know, there was the beginning of the catheter ablation, you know, we to do a book and, and so on. So they asked me to go and helping to set up the lab in Thailand at the university, in a couple of universities, including my alma mater. At the time they had this problem and then a lot of people, uh, a lot of people from the US and from Europe came decided to study this, this uh, peculiar death uh, that in Thailand we call it Lita. But nobody really did anything on the, on the heart, you know. It's, uh, so I said, well, um, let's look at the EKG and, it, and, and sure enough, the, those patients had a lot of J-Web syndrome and Bukata syndrome. We published that, was a marker of sudden I spent that. And that's the beginning to take off because then I get it really involved with, with, the, with uh, uh, this syndrome. Now, at the time we had no treatment and the defibrillator was very difficult, uh, but we got support by, I, I'm very uh, saddened by, by the fact that the Modi Mao, who was my support, big supporter, big um, uh, contributor to, us, so to, the, to, to the treatment, Bukata syndrome from behind the scene, just passed away. You know? um, anyway, so he um, set up and sending uh, a deep, some of initial defibrillator to treat this patient. And, and at the time, the, uh, we didn't have any money to, to, from the government to put a defibrillator in this patient because more, all these patients were initial patients, very poor. Uh, 
I, I sometimes have to bring a lot of the infected uh, uh, device that have been removed from in the U.S. and brought them here in a, in, to use in some of these patients. But so, just also, to clarify, Dr. Naramani, this is all happening in Bangkok. Now we are talking about all in Bangkok. Yeah, because uh, we the patient that came from many areas uh, in, in 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 Thailand, especially in the northeast. But the treatment that we provide. Uh, and I'm also fortunate that I had the fellow that uh, came to Colorado and went back, Dr. Kambanath Viraku, who went back to the Thai Air Force Hospital, uh, and that would became our center to study this Bukhara syndrome up until now, 30 years. And I'm, because the, uh, the interest of time, it, it, it getting bigger uh, uh, as the times go by. Uh, we, as you know, we uh, subsequently uh, did the find the subjects of the Bukata uh, syndrome in RV OT and RV epicardia, and we show that the renal blade those area uh, we prevent recurrent of VF, and that's very important because uh, we don't have a lot of therapy. ICD did not prevent recurrent of VF, and it's, we. And then when the patient have frequent ICD discharge, it became a problem. And quinidine is not available in Thailand or many places. So, but then later on, we found uh, that uh, the, the, not only we found the subject, but we also identified the pathology underlying that in collaboration with uh, uh, St. George University, uh, Dr. Bale and uh, um, Arthur Will. Suddenly, uh, the, the study became uh, 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 very exciting and then have a lot of collaboration uh, from, 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 from Europe and from the US. And, then, and, and now, at currently, we have the uh, lenomitri uh, with the, uh, with the uh, uh, catheter ablation. Which I'm, I'm writing now the registry of the 159 patient who had a, a ablation. And we do a whole genome sequencing uh, and, uh, with the grant for, from the National Research Council in Thailand. And we have uh, several industry funding. So all this is happening because, uh, um, you know, in a way I'm very fortunate that everything come uh, at the right time and then have a big support with like uh, Dr. Um, Dr. Mao, and then uh, and then industry. Uh, Biosense also donated a cattle for, for to the F for free, uh, and with the catheters that we're doing, and uh, and and you know. So I'm all forever grateful. And then collaboration with uh, Michelle Azikara, uh, uh, Meles uh, Hosini, and then Dr. Will and uh, Connie. They have been very very. Um, uh, rewarding and very um, educational. For me, I learned a lot. Uh, Dr. Nadamani, so you bring up a great point about um, industry um, and, uh, you know, physician interactions and how beneficial the mutual collaboration can be, especially to take care of these patients. So what came of it um, right now, like in, in, in the current situation, are ICDs available for your population there in Bangkok? Uh, is it supported by the hospital or is there an insurance? How does it work? It's the now the ICD uh, have become uh, readily available because Thailand economy has improved and, and, and the national healthcare uh, provide the uh, uh, ICD um, uh, at the um, at cost. Uh, for for the patient who had the Bukata syndrome or sudden unexpected syndrome or idiopathic ventricular fibrillation, JVF syndrome, had cardiac arrest. So it was not. It has it had been available for the past eight ten years. You know, I didn't have to bring any uh, ICD from the U.S. anymore, and that was uh, uh, nice uh, uh, to to see that it happened. But the, 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 the other things that we still don't have uh, available for, um, to take care of, uh, for taking care of this patient 
is the, um, the, the uh, electrophysiologist, well-trained electrophysiologist, they can do a lot of complex arrhythmia. Mm -hmm. uh, we have four or five universities that I'm involved in, uh, working with them and training that they can do complex uh, ablation, including the epicardio, because in the Bukata syndrome, we have to go into epicardio. And then uh, four or five uh, university, four or five centers can do that. But I try to. How many, do you have a EP training there, or how, what? What are the patients' yes. volume? Where do you get them from? Uh, is it all Thai population? Well, in 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 the university, yes, there are Thai population, uh, and we have the Thailand has about sixty six million population, but the number of your electrophysiologists are still not adequate to uh, uh, to to provide the adequate care for all this arrhythmia, uh, for arrhythmia needs of this, uh, of the population, basically. And I'm really concerned because uh, um, they, they are, the, most of the electrophysiology they have are the job suit, not like in the US, you know, we can just focus on doing one or two things, you know. Uh, here, they, ha they have to do all kinds of uh, clinical work uh, and, and uh, there are a lot of patients. I'm sure you experience in, in, when you visit India, the same thing. Exactly, uh, yeah. Um, now, because of our experience here, uh, I, I ex uh, plan to go and uh, to work in, in Vietnam uh, with a couple of uh, electrophysiologists because Vietnam also have a lot of the uh, patient like uh, the J. Webster dog patient uh, that have a, uh, a lot of problem with the uh, recurrent ventricular fibrillation, and that's um, you know that that is a thing that I I, I love doing that because it's pretty rewarding. Yes, you have been doing this for a long time. So, do you go? Is there a hospital in Vietnam that you can go to, or can you bring the patients from there to Thailand that you are? In the past, I uh, we uh, we we brought the patient from Vietnam uh, to Bangkok uh, for free. The hospital that I, I, I work, I'm working now, have a plan to, to, to take care of this, this patient. Uh, and the patient that they brought in it was pretty sick, have a hundred uh, defibrillation, ICD shock and things like that. But now the, the, uh, there's a hospital that I'm going to help them uh, and train them to do this. Okay, to do this okay. Uh, have all the equipment now and the, and the electrophysiology uh, very nice, Dr. Tuan, um, uh, very keen to do. Um, um, and, uh, and I think they're gonna be doing fine because they are pretty good. So how can we as HRS community help and collaborate in these kind of situations? Well, obviously um, uh, we will need help in terms of, I'm sure that uh, the many hospitals uh, in Southeast Asia uh, would welcome uh, and uh, some expertise from the US uh, to come and help and train them. Uh, because obviously I cannot you know, go everywhere to, to train, I do, or to, to go to, to, to teach and things like that. So uh, I think maybe we can talk about HIS and, and, and us to try how, to, how we can set up things so that uh, 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 some of our uh, teacher from, from, from the US can come and, um, and then work with the, with, uh, the, uh, the local electrophysiologist. And I can tell you, uh, based on my experience, I'm the one who most benefit from this. Oh, for when sure. I came, when I came out, uh, they said tough cases for me. You know, tough cases for, for me to do. Right. And, and when I do tough cases, you learn from those. Yes. And Absolutely. Then, so oh. that we are doing, we learn from that. I always say that uh, doing a tough ablation is just like a, you know, the movie Highlander Kill. You know, you get stronger every time when you, when you, when you get when done, then you learn from that. And so, <laughs> so the teacher is coming from all the electrophysiologists who are willing to donate their time. If they come and, and, and do cases, they will also benefit. I mean, a mutual benefit for both. 
the local elected facilities and politicians. Well, we have come to the end of our time. Um, I want to thank you, Dr. Nanamani, and also Dr. Srivatsa today. I just really loved hearing not only a little bit about your story going back in time to um, when you identify Brigada syndrome in Thailand and all of the individuals that you work with and really being that sort of uh, pathfinding person for us and the ongoing work that you continue to do to try to really help those in, as you said, Southeast Asia, there's definitely an identified need uh, to help train electrophysiologists to work in those areas. You're um, an inspiration to all of us and we thank you for being with us today. Uma, I wanna thank you for leading our discussion and to our audience, I just welcome you um, back to future Global Voices interviews on HRS TV. Thank you for joining us today.